Cartesian? Cartesian? Kardashian. It's Kardashian. pronounced Cartesian. Yes, it is. And in this video, I'm going to explain just what a Cartesian vector is. Let's get into it. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably have a pretty good idea of what a vector quantity is. You know, a directed line segment. A line segment that has a magnitude or a size and a direction. With both direction and magnitude. But what exactly is a Cartesian vector? Well, that word Cartesian should sound pretty familiar to you if you've ever looked at a set of axes. You've probably heard the term Cartesian plane to describe a set of axes where x values are placed on the horizontal axis and y values are placed on the vertical axis. We use Cartesian coordinates to describe the location of a point on this set of axes. So the point 2, comma 1 tells us to start at the origin, move positive 2 along the x-axis, and positive one along the y-axis to produce this point. You, so you actually already know quite a bit about Cartesian things already, right? Well, a Cartesian vector is just a vector that's constructed using points on a Cartesian plane. Mm -hmm. Let's take a closer look. So imagine we have a pile of vectors that look like this. Each of these has the same magnitude, and we can write the endpoints of each of them. These are all Cartesian vectors. They're vectors that are defined using coordinates on a Cartesian plane. This particular vector has endpoints at 4, 3, and 2, 2, and it appears to have the exact same magnitude as this one, which has endpoints at 0, 0, and 2, 1. So Cartesian vectors can be picked up and moved around anywhere on a Cartesian plane. Their magnitude and direction won't change when we do this. Same magnitude, same direction. However, I want to focus on this specific one right here. If we place a Cartesian vector at the origin, like this one, we call it a position vector. A position vector starts at the origin and heads in the direction of a point. And as it turns out, we can use the coordinates of the point to write the Cartesian vector. So for example, if a point has coordinates 2 comma 1, 2 comma 1 in square brackets is the vector that starts at the origin and moves right two units and up one unit. Note that we use square brackets for Cartesian vectors and round brackets for Cartesian coordinates. Let's look at another example. Say the vector negative 3, 1. Since we have square brackets, we know that we are looking at a position vector that starts at the origin and moves in the direction of negative 3, 1. So that vector would look something like this. Now I want to introduce something new here, and that is another way that we can write Cartesian vectors. We can write them using square brackets like this, or we can write them using a linear combination of unit vectors. Mm -hmm. I know, it sounds complicated, just hang on. Imagine you had a vector called I and a vector called J. Each of these vectors is going to have a magnitude or a size of 1. But I travels along the x-axis, while J travels along the y-axis. These are called unit vectors because they have a magnitude or a size of 1 unit. So if we wanted to write the vector 2, 1 as a linear combination of unit vectors, we would ask ourselves how many I's and J's would we need to get us to the tip of the vector, 2, 1. Well, if I start at the origin, I need to go two units right and one unit up. So if we use two unit vectors in the right direction, we could say we have 2i. That's the i unit vector with a scalar multiple by a factor of 2. And we also need one unit vector upward, which we would call 1j. If we add these two vectors together using our tip-to-tail method, we would have a resultant vector that matches our 2, 1 vector. Therefore, the position vector 2, 1 could be written as a linear combination of unit vectors using 2i plus j. And you can do this for any Cartesian vector. For example, that negative 3, 1 vector from earlier. Well, we need negative 3i vectors, or 3i vectors along the negative x-axis, and one j vector to get us to that point negative 3, 1. So we could say that vector negative 3, 1 can be written as negative 3i plus 1j. 
So that's just another way that we can write Cartesian vectors. We use i and j to tell us how many unit vectors to move vertically and horizontally.